The Golden Hour Birth Podcast, a podcast about real birth stories and creating connections through our shared experiences. Childbirth isn't just about the child. It's about the person who gave birth, their lives, their wisdom, and their empowerment. We're Liz and Natalie, the Golden Hour Birth Podcast, and we're here to laugh with you, cry with you, and hold space for you. Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. I am your co-host, Liz. And I'm your co-host, Natalie. And tonight we're going to share our own mini episode and share our own journey of transitioning from one to two kids. Liz, how was your journey from going from Vivian or, oh shoot, Arthur <laughs> to Vivian? Um, so one to, I thought the transition from zero to one was like really hard. Yeah. And then I had a second and I was like, oh, okay, no, this is a lot harder <laughs> in certain ways. Yes. You know, like, obviously you don't have the worry and like the Googling and everything of like, is my baby doing this wrong? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, am I, can they have this or whatever? Um, but managing two kids was just a little a little bit difficult um trying to figure out like okay when you're going somewhere for example like i'm gonna have a a car seat a pumpkin seat and then but my toddler still needs help out of the car and so like okay who do i get out of the car first Uh you know stuff like that like logistically i feel like it was difficult yeah but yeah How did Arthur do in the transition? Um, He loved it. So, you know, he was only, he was just turning, about to turn two when we handed it in. And um, we did it to where my parents had him Mm -hmm. for a couple days. And uh, we took Vivian home from the hospital. It was during COVID, so we couldn't have visitors. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't even come up if we had wanted, you know, had wanted him to, which we probably would have had had him come up. But uh, so when we got home, I asked my parents if they would keep him for another night so that we could just have that one night with Vivian. Because, you know, when you bring a new baby home in that first night, you're a little bit nutty. (laughs) I'll probably never forget those first nights. You're just like, what happened to my precious good baby in the yeah. hospital and you get home and you're like what the fuck <laughs> um and you question everything about your parents <laughs> yeah so that was really good and then they brought him home um the next day and it was over um new year's uh-huh. so uh, he was at my parents and he had they had a new year's party and um, so it was really fun for him to be there. Um, it wasn't like he was missing out. On, yeah. He wasn't missing us. <laughs> you know? So when he got home, it was, um, he knew kind of, I guess, that we were bringing him a baby because mm-hmm. my parents showed him pictures and stuff. And we have a really cute picture of him kissing yeah. the iPad um, of oh, the picture of Vivian. I was thinking so it was really cute. Person. Oh, the video of him. Thank you. I know. It was so precious. I was like, we have to video of him meeting her. Yeah. And so um, we, I I heard some things about like, oh, like, don't have the mom holding the baby or anything like that. But mm-hmm. we didn't follow any of that. And I was just like holding her. And he came in and he just was so cute. And he was just like. Baby, baby, and he's still obsessed with babies. Now he's obsessed with Violet. I know. So cute. You You asked me about her today. Um, (laughs) Um, And he also asked if Vivian can go back to being a baby. Oh my! Because he can't hold her anymore. (laughs) Arthur. So it was. He did really well. Um, He wasn't jealous. He didn't act out. Um. So yeah, the transition. For him, I felt like went pretty well. Um, and now, since he since he was only two when we had her, mm-hmm. I feel like it's just been normal for him now. You know? Yeah, he's not like 
I don't know. He doesn't know any different. Yeah. Of having not having a system. And having this like huge life transition like four or something. Yeah. And he yeah. wasn't like, oh, I, I miss all the attention. Yeah. Yes, you know, he My, doesn't remember that. Not the scaredy <laughs> one who has like a four year old and who's like welcoming <laughs> a new baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is just my experience. I don't. I don't really know what it would have been like. He might like if we pro- if we had another baby now. Obviously, the transition would be different because he's like a different person now. Almost. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I can't really think of anything more like significant. I'm sure I will as we go on. But yeah. What about you? Um. So I feel like our transition has gone really smooth. Um. Minus like here and there hiccups so i knew like going into this like i wanted to be up with the baby because i wanted to like nurse and i was like you know, sam you stay on wesley's schedule i can stay up with the baby and like i'll just sleep you know when you're at work like because you have to go to work and i'll just be at home like I, it's fine i got this and that was a good like three or four months Mm -hmm. and then she started doing bottles and she sucks at sleeping and so now it's been like definitely a more tag team thing but i don't know like we made it through those first few months with wes the transition he has like been amazing like i was nervous for like these big feelings the only thing that really came up was like he would he had like a full week of like waking up between like one and three a.m., and that was a weird part. Um, but that surely dropped. Like, who knows if it was from the baby or something else? Mm-hmm. But um, he made it through, and then he's just been like so sweet with her, like always kissing her, <laughs> always hugging her, folding her. It's so sweet. It's just like the sweetest soul. And I think I've gone through what you've gone through, like the logistics. Like if I have them both alone, I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this? Am I going to get Violet out? Am I going to take her car seat? Am I going to wear her Mm -hmm. and then get Wes out? I'm always thinking, but at the same time, I've just like gotten really good at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Once you do it, yeah, um, it gets so much easier. Exactly. And I was nannying for three kids at one point. And I like, (laughs) I wanted to take them out. And so, like, I had practice of like taking three kids out and now I'm managing two kids. Yeah. Now that they're older, I have to think of like, if I'm by myself, I have to think of the playground. It's like, that's it. (laughs) Yeah. Things just get different. They really do get different Um, for two. But you were talking about the, schedule and that reminded me of um when we first had Vivian it it was nice Jason was like on Arthur's schedule too Mm -hmm. and he would take him to and from daycare like every day and so that was just so nice to not have to think about her yeah and luckily he had a good paternity leave Mm -hmm. um so that was that was really nice to yeah. have that and not have to worry about like getting your, your kid to take care when you have a thing, like putting them in the car seat, taking them to daycare. You know, it's I just know. Like, I'm so thankful Sam was able to like make his own schedule and like to go into work later mm-hmm. just to take Wes to daycare. And I'm so thankful we had daycare. Yeah. So, like, I don't done it. I'm so thankful for daycare. Um, when we do go out, like, as a whole family with all four of us, usually it's just, like, now an onset thing that, like, I get Violet gets less. <laughs> and probably because I wear her so much, oh, so much. I never wore less. Very rarely. It was, like, fun in the beginning, and then we just, like, kind of stopped. But now I wear Violet all the time, and, like, I don't want that to stop. And it's just easier because we already have one running around. <laughs> so it's just easier to not think about that and like have hands free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baby wearing is huge for second baby. Yes. I think I wore you know, a lot also. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of pictures of her in the third year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless it like um, the park or hiking yeah. or whatever. 
so baby wearing yeah, for just sure. Little hard popping out. I know. <laughs> oh, I love her that. little mohawk. <laughs> Um, I followed the big little feelings of like, don't let, don't let the baby meet the baby. Don't let the toddler meet the baby like in your arms, mm-hmm. like in like a, you know, neutral area. And so I made sure that Violet was like on the hospital bed because Wes could come up at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, we had meet her alone. He lost interest really fast because my dad and my sister were there. And so he was like, Papa, Papa, come, come do this with me. So, but it was really, really sweet. Like I had them both give each other a gift. Oh, even though cute. it was very small. Yeah. And, you know, just something. But that's like, I was following big were looking rings. And who knows, you know, I could have come. We had him meet her in my arms, but oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Some things work and some things don't. Yeah different for every family yeah um yeah i've heard things like having a special like toy basket Mm -hmm. for the toddler when you're uh like nursing or feeding the baby so that you're not like always like oh i can't play with you right now because i have to be playing yeah but it's more like oh you get these special toys while i'm busy doing this Mm -hmm. um and then i think i heard things like the language that you um, not not blaming the baby like when you yes. can't do things but saying something instead of like oh well my hands are full right now but i'll help you in a minute yes never blame like oh we can't go to the bird right now but we can go when she wakes up or yeah. you know, this. um um uh, oh yeah i felt a lot of anxiety if, like, Sam had something, like, during, like, the night, like, sometimes you were doing soccer. And so, when, even if Sam was home, and, like, Wes, closer and closer to 4.30, when Wes would get home, I would feel a lot of anxiety creep in. And then even more, like, if I knew that I had something coming up where I was going to be alone. I think it was, like, where she was kind of, like, a month old, and I had them both alone. Yeah, lots of anxiety crept in. And each time I did it, I was just like, oh, I'm so capable of this. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're my babies, and, like, this is what I do, and, like, it's not different. Now I have no anxiety when I have them both alone. Mm-hmm. More just like, I'm going to make sure I just make it through. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, have to, like, outdo myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had to give up a lot of, like, uh, I'm wrong. Uh, I would, I guess I would say perfectionist tendencies, Mm -hmm. like wanting to always have the dishes done before, you know, bedtime or, you know, vacuuming every day or just like little things like that or cooking from scratch. Like, I know that does not happen at all anymore. I know. It's like maybe once a week. Um, And now we're down to where, like, if they have a protein, a carb and a fruit or vegetable, for dinner, like more or succeeding. I'm stuck to play. I like that. Dinner flame has changed a lot, and bedtime has changed a lot too. With two, I, we we were talking the other day about how with Arthur we would sit in his rocking chair with him in our lap and read books, and it was always books of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and bedtime was just like very calm, and now it's like just chaos. <laughs> and we have to split up. And Vivian, like, will not even let us read books anymore before she starts, like, flipping out and, like, not wanting to go to bed. So we're like, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to read books to you then. Like, she will not just, like, sit in bed while we read her books. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's very different now. And they're just two different kids. Yeah. You know, Arthur still loves reading books. And Vivian loves reading books. Not at bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And then the other difference, the big difference... With the kids, it's funny that we notice is that Vivian does not like being alone. And I wonder if that's just because she never had to play alone. She always had Arthur alongside of her. Um, so it's it's kind of difficult. And, you know, when Arthur doesn't want to play with her or whatever, she's not good at playing by herself. And Arthur is alive. <laughs> I'm so intrigued to see how Violet 
ends up. Like if she's like that, because usually I'll end up setting her down where like Wes is. Like if he's playing with cars, I'll just like, yeah, here you yeah. go. <laughs> like you play with cars. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of girl she is. But from what I see, she's got a lot to say. Yeah. She's not going <laughs> to let me out easy. She's, she's got to give me a heart. Yeah. Those second kids. Yeah. And girl. Keep on with those. Yeah. Zows. It's I, funny because Vivian literally played with all of Arthur's toys. Like we didn't really buy her any new toys until she like started telling us what she wanted. And it's like dolls and pink things and rainbows and princesses. And I'm like, where did this come from? I never really thought like we never put like these gender norms on either of them. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot of like just neutral toys and stuff. And it's just so surprising to me. That's just so girly. Wes loves cars. Yeah. He <laughs> he will this is kind of weird and kind of dirty, but we like we like go on walks now. He'll stop and kiss cars. <laughs> Like car, black Hilarious. car, white car, red car, and then he'll stop, touch them, and kiss them. And like, I don't know where that's that came so from. Fun. I don't know why he likes cars so much. Yeah, so weird. And dinosaurs, so very. Weird. I guess we would say like boy things. Yeah, yeah. I know some things that Vivian like. She likes dinosaurs. She likes trains. Yeah, like he's worth it. And she'll be like, "No, I want to wear my rainbow dress today." And I'm like. <laughs> Oh, great. And now you're in a fashion. So cool. Let's go shopping. <laughs> I know. I really can't wait to do that kind of stuff with her. Yeah. But Arthur loves it too. The other day, Vivian wanted me to paint her nails. And then Arthur came out and wanted me to paint his nails. And of course, I said yes to both. Um, so it's going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Let us know how your transitions go from one to two or two to three. I'll have to come back and play about two to three. Like right now? Oh, is this an announcement? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> God, no. We're just had a heart attack. <laughs> like, no. no. But if anyone does have any insight from two to three, let me know. No announcement, though. That'll be our next. Maybe. No. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and found it insightful and beneficial. Remember, the Golden Hour Birth Podcast is made possible by the support of listeners like you. If you appreciate the content we bring you each week, consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcast platform or sharing the show with your friends and family. Your support helps us reach more people and continue creating valuable episodes. If you have any questions, suggestions, or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us on our website, www.goldenhourbirthpodcast, or connect with us on social media. We value your feedback and want to make sure that we're delivering the content you want to hear. Before we sign off, we'd like to express our gratitude to our incredible guests who joined us today. We are honored that they trust us enough to be so open and vulnerable. We're grateful for their time and willingness to share their stories with us. If you're interested in taking the conversation further with us, join us on our Facebook group, The Golden Hour Birth Circle. We'll be back next week with another exciting episode, so be sure to tune in. Until then, stay golden and remember to take care of yourself. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Golden Hour Birth Podcast. Bye!